We lived in Mississippi in 1933 on our own land, bought by Grandpa long before we children were born. It was once part of the Granger plantation, and Mr. Granger, he kept trying to buy it back from us. But that land meant too much to us Logans ever to sell. I was 11, and I did a lot of growing up that year. My brother Stacy was the oldest, and after me was Christopher John. And youngest of all was Clayton Chester, called Little Man by almost everyone. Big Ma, our grandma, looked after us because Mama was a teacher at the Negro school we all went to, and Papa was away from home most of the time, working for the railroad so we could pay off the mortgage on the land. When there was trouble, Papa brought his friend Mr. Morrison home to help us, and mostly we were happy together. But we knew what whites could do to us out of not caring or out of hating. But we stood up under it. Mama got our friends to stop buying at the Wallace store because the Wallaces caused most of the trouble. We had help from a white man, our lawyer, Mr. Jameson, and he said there were others like him who didn't go along with the Wallaces and what they did. We stood up even when Mr. Granger got Mama fired from teaching, and then the Wallaces hit us. Set it on the road. But his head. Bullet well, just creased it. Are you all right, son? Yes, sir. Papa, how come you got that blood on your head? Hey, your papa's gonna be all right. We'll take care of him. Now you go with your brother and go get back to bed. Go on. I'm gonna get a couple of slats from another bed. Be right back. Go to bed. Not till you tell us what happened. It was them Wallace's. They come at us from the dark from their truck shooting. And they got Papa and a wheel rolled over his leg. But Mr. Morrison, he got two of them all right. He got them good. Go to bed. Will he be all right? He'll be all right. All he needs is rest now. Mr. Morrison, we owe you so much. You don't owe me nothing. I never had a family to look to before this. Got me a family. But I told you it was too soon. I just had to get out of that bed. See what it feels like to stand up again. Feels good. <laughs> now, let me see your books, Mary. 
With Hamlet's half of the mortgage money, we can make the June payment. Is there anything left over? A couple of dollars. Do you think we should write Hamlet and borrow some? I don't want him to know about this. With his temper, he'd come down here and get himself lynched. We'll probably have to sell a couple of the cows and the calves to get through July and August. Then with the cotton in September, we'll get by. If the Wallaces leave us alone. <laughs> they got me. It's Mr. Morrison they're going to go after. Then he ought to leave, David. He won't. We need him, and he knows that. He's willing to risk it. Cassie, go find Stacy. Mr. Morrison will need some help loading the wagon. We're lending some tools to the Wiggins. Yes, Mama. It hurts me, David children here in these things, but they have to. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Jeremy. Sure is beautiful up there. When I grow up, I'm going to have a house and some trees. So peaceful and cool, especially at night. How do you know? I got a bedroom up in one. Built it myself. Sleep there. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Jeremy. Stacy, Mr. Morrison needs you. He said I've got time yet. How's your papa? Leg bothers him some. About what happened? Is he going to complain to the sheriff? He wouldn't do any good. What about your papa and your uncles? They don't want it known what they've done. I guess it's shame people learning that one black man beat up two of them and chased the third off. Dewberry, he's still in bed. Thurston can't hardly use his arm. That Mr. Morrison, he must be something. Yeah, he's something. Y'all seen TJ lately? I hadn't seen him at all. See him all the time. My brothers, Melvin and R.W., they pretend he's their friend. Then, as soon as he goes, they laugh at him. They give him things, and then they laugh at him. You know they steal those things. I know it, but T.J. gets the blame. Stacy, I don't like talking against my own kin, but Melvin and R.W., they got something in mind to do to T.J. I don't know what, but maybe you ought to tell T.J. Maybe T.J. ought to find out for herself. I gotta go help Mr. Morrison. Bye, Jeremy. Being friends can get you all mixed up. How are you so smart? Like you and Jeremy. He talks against his own kin. To have someone who used to be your friend, but you won't help him. Would you help, TJ? No, not after him getting Mama fired. But I guess he never was my friend. Ain't mine either. And if TJ wants to get himself in trouble, I can't stop him. Are you just in time, Stacy? Help me with these tools. You mind that leg, you hear, David? <laughs> Papa, can I go with Mr. Morrison? Me too. And me? Well, as long as you don't make a nuisance. I never make a nuisance. Oh, you're getting a little hefty, you there, gal. Give my hat, boy. Get around that, Jack. Well, let's go. All right. 
Yeah, let's get that song. During slavery, white folks bred us black folks for special things, like animals, for house duty, for field hands, so as they could work us hard. We bred for strength. Lay down in the wagon. Be quiet. Shotgun anywhere there? No, sir. Cut your heart out, boy. My brother's laid up like they is, and you still running around free, just like a white man. I ought to gun you down where you sit. You gonna move your truck? Is my truck in your way, boy? I guess I might move it when I get good and ready.
it's good to see you getting around again, bro, Logan. I'll be buzzing to get out. Come next week when I take this harness off, man, you're gonna see me dancing. <laughs> yes, sir, and I'll dance right along with you. <laughs> Mary, I'm gonna join the singers. You children behave yourself, you hear me? Okay. Mama, when can we start eating? More like a question, when are you gonna stop? <laughs> I got you. Yeah. For a boy? Uh, Papa, they're my friends. Look what they give me. Besides, they wanted to see what a meeting was like. Ain't that so? How you doing in school, Stacy? New teacher making you work hard? <laughs> hey, I'm doing better than you, TJ. Bitch, I'm having more fun. Come on, RW, Melvin. I'll show you around. No, boy, no. They weren't invited. You don't need no invitation to no meeting. TJ, you heard what your papa said. R.W. Melvin? Reckon we seen enough, eh? Yeah, I, I seen enough. You sure are piling up trouble for yourself? I've been doing it all my life. It's hard to break old habits. My God gave it to me. Now I'm gonna let it shine. My God gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. My God gave it to me. Stacy, don't I'm that TJ have no brains at all? Can't he see they just using him? He don't want to see it. If somebody told him, he wouldn't listen. Everywhere I go, hey. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I I'll get to bed. Got to get up early in the morning. Why? You're not going to Strawberry, LT. You figuring on taking that mortgage payment in yourself? No, my Mary will take it. Stacy's going with it. Well, they wouldn't come at me in broad daylight. We need you here at the farm. Your wife could get in trouble, too. Stacy will have our shotgun. Can I go too, Papa? Now, we can't have the whole family missing school, Cassie. Can we? David. You asked me here because you needed me. You still do. Yeah, we still do. Tell my leg, man. When that time comes... We'll talk about it. You worry too much. been a good friend. We care about you. My folks was bred as field hands.
You stay with the wagon, Stacy. don't have the papers, but I will get a mail out to you and you bring this back to me as soon as you got the papers and signed. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. I came to make our mortgage payment, Mr. Higgins, sir. Can't you see I'm busy? Yes, sir. I see you're very busy. Just take your time, sir. Run, check that back door, boy. Gone. Just making sure. This is your last payment, you know, Mary. Oh, no, sir. You have four more years on that mortgage. No. This is for you. want to know the reason. Read your mortgage agreement. It's clearly stated. I want to know the reason why the bank is doing this now. We try to be fair to our customers, Mary. You've got a week to raise the money. This is Mr. Granger's doing, isn't it? It's the bank's doing. He's an officer here, isn't he? Yes. I want to see him. Well, I'm afraid he's not available now. I want to see him. Guard! Planning the rob. What's the matter, Mom? Mr. Granger is trying to take our land. Called up the mortgage. What are you gonna do, Mama? I don't know, Stacy. Don't know.
Thurston, this ain't the Tatum place. This further up the road, please. Butters gathered. Tip it out now. Mary, there's something wrong with that child and the boys, too. They're as quiet as church mice. You think they could have heard the cars last night? Uh huh. Uh, I looked in on them. Sound asleep, every one of them. Mr. Jim Barnett. He's the man who runs the mercantile store. We know that. Story. What happened? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mr. Tatum, he had an argument with Mr. Barnett over the bill that he was paying for. So, he says to Mr. Barnett, I didn't order all them things. And Mr. Barnett says, boy, you calling me a liar? And Mr. Tatum says, yes, sir, I guess I is. So last night, them old night men, they rode down to Mr. Tatum's place and they tarred and feathered him. It wasn't because of the bus, was it? Bus? What a bus got to do with it? Nothing at all. Is that all you came for, TJ? Oh, Stacy, we still friends, ain't we? Well, I was thinking, maybe you could use the brain to get the questions on the big test coming up. I already told you before, no! See y'all later. Stacy, do you think if they found out about the bus, they're gonna put tarn frazzles all over us? I don't know. Get to your steps. Stacy, yeah. what are you doing with that paper? Nothing. I haven't read from it or nothing. It's not your handwriting. Whose is it? I don't know. Well, since you won't tell me whose it is, and since I found it on your seat, I have to assume you were cheating. You will be the one punished for it, Stacy.
Reckon he's at the wireless door by now. Papa told us not to go there. Why are you in such a hurry, boy? Where's your brothers and sisters? I'm scared. They're in trouble. Well? The wildest store, not telling on them. I just don't want they to be hurt. I understand, Christopher John. Come on. Get around, Reed. Breaking them up. Boy, you don't walk away from me when I'm talking to you. You come back here, boy! Seems I heard your papa tell you not to go up to that Wallace store. Mr. Morrison, Stacy knew TJ was hiding there. Well, I know what happened. Are you gonna tell Mama? I'm going to let you be the one to tell him. Sometimes, sometimes the person's got to fight, but not in front of folks like the Wallace. They think it's funny when we fight each other. Yeah, who heard him? Yes. Yes, sir. Is Mama home? She's inside. You gonna tell her, Stacy? She gonna wear you out good. Mr. Morrison, leave the wagon hitch, please. Stay in the wagon, children. You brought your babies. I forget your names, but hello, babies. How do, Miss Berry? Miss Berry. Miss Logan come and brought the children, John. Ain't that nice of her? Have you been well, Miss Berry? Very well, thank you. My Susan, she take good care of me. But every afternoon, I come out to visit with Mr. Berry. In there, you know. They never found him. But he's in there. And he likes me to come. Could I offer you something? No, thank you, Miss Barry. We can't stay. Just came to say hello. Thank you. Say goodbye, children. Goodbye, goodbye Miss Barry. And Mr. Barry. Goodbye, Mr. Barry.
the Wallaces did that. And that's why we don't go to their store. But why'd they do that, Mama? Mr. Barry ain't ever heard any of them. I don't know. Except Mr. Barry owned his land, the Wallaces don't. Theirs belongs to Mr. Granger. I think it riles them, knowing a colored man owns his land and they don't. We own our land. Not outright. There's still mortgage money owing on half of it. Or maybe it's something else. Something that comes from years of looking down at us and fearing us at the same time because we don't break. You all come with me and you listen good here. Because I got some business I want to attend to. thought ever since my husband said no one should buy from the Wallaces. But seeing Miss Berry made me sure. We've got to stop buying from them. Where else we gonna get credit? Well, we've been buying groceries over in Vicksburg. Nobody signed for us over there. Mr. Granger, he signed for us over at the Wallaces. As long as we work at land. Besides, Vicksburg too far off. What if someone would be willing to make the trip to Vicksburg for you? Got no cash money. What if somebody backed your signature? When I was a little boy, I got burned real bad. It healed over, but I ain't never forgot the pain. That's an awful way to die. It's the way Mr. Barry died. That's what I'm thinking. Miss Logan. You find somebody to sign my credit, and I'll consider it. Thank you. I'm going to stop by the Turners now, and then the Wiggins, and as soon as I can, all our friends around here. Miss Logan, you sure is taking on a lot. I know that. And I know the Wallace is not going to like me for it either. But we've got to do something, don't we? All that week, as soon as school was over, Mama went around talking to our friends about boycotting the Wallaces. Sometimes I went with her alone. Sometimes my brothers came with us because she wanted us to learn how hard it was to do what we thought right. Most of the people she talked to went along with her, but there were some scared to, or owing too much to the Wallaces. And that Saturday, Big Ma drove us to Strawberry to talk to the lawyer, Mr. Jameson, about something she wouldn't tell us. Mr. Jameson's a white man, but we'd known him a long time and trusted him. Cassie, you wait here now. I'll be out as soon as I finish with Mr. Jameson. See, it's me and you's friends again. I got something to show you. Come on. You too, Cassie. Come on. You ever seen a gun like that in your whole entire life? One of these days, I'm gonna have it. What you gonna use it for? You ain't got no need for no gun. If I get me that gun, ain't nobody gonna mess with me. I need the box. Oh, Mr. Barnett, sir, I got this here list of things my mama wants from the store. Are you one of Mr. Granger's people? Yes, sir. Package ready, right over here. Already made up. Right. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Barnett, sir. 
But you was waiting on TJ before you began waiting on this man here. Well, then you've got to get your little cutter self over there and wait. But we was here before him, and you've been taking care of everybody else. Now, that ain't fair. Who little niggers, this? I ain't nobody's little nigger. Let's go, Cassie. Stacy, tell him. You know he ain't fair making us wait. She your sister, boy? Yes, sir. Then you get her out of here and make sure she don't come back till your mammy teach her what she is. I already know what I am. What's wrong with you, Stacy? You know he was wrong. You know it and I know it, but he doesn't know it. And that's what the trouble is. Now, you stay here. And I'm going to get big now. Why don't you look where you're going? I didn't see you, Lily and Jean. Well, apologize. You bumped into me, now apologize. I'm sorry. That ain't enough. You get down in the road. You crazy. Get down in the road. Maybe that way you won't bump into decent white folks. My daughter, Lillian Jean, tells you to get down off this sidewalk. You get, you hear? I want to tell you, when she tells you to do something, you do it. Now, I want you to apologize to her right now. I apologize already, Mr. Wallace. You get up here and you apologize to my daughter right now. It's me, Cassie. <laughs> Cassie, we're going home. Not till she apologizes to my daughter, you ain't. She's only a child. Tell her, woman. Go on, Cassie. But apologize. A big mom. I see. I'm sorry. <laughs> Miss Lillian Jean. I'm sorry, Miss Lillian Jean. Did he hurt her? <laughs> Made you feel like a big man, didn't it, Caleb? None of your business, Jameson. home. I'm too tired to go any further. Stacy, you and Cassie, take the mule to the barn and unhitch them. Goodbye, y'all. Bye. Come on. Come on, mule. Cassie, what's Mr. Granger's car doing here? Lena, go help your mama fix supper. Come on. 
I hated it. Why? Uh, it's over and done with, son, and best forgotten. I'm never going to forget it. What happened, Cassie? Now, don't go getting your temper up. It's up already, Ma. Stacy, run and fetch Mr. Morrison. Hurry. I want to know Hurry. Well, well, first that Mr. Barnett. Is that old Jim Lee Barnett? He threw me out of the store because I told him he was unfair. Well, what else he do to you? Mr. Wallace, he knocked me down in the road and made me apologize to his daughter, Lydia and Jean. Because I wouldn't get in the road when she told me. And you did? Big Ma said I had to. I didn't want you hurt, child. Let it be now. How much a child ain't hurt? Not hurt, Ma. You can look into her eyes and say she ain't hurt. Hey, Ma! Don't go starting trouble. Cassie's all right. I ain't no peck of wood push his child around any time it suits him. If I knocked his daughter down, you know what happened to me? I'd be hanging from that old tree. I got, let me go, Mary. Hammer. Hammer. Mr. Morrison, stop him, please. I'll bet he'll teach that old Mr. Wallace a thing or two. I hope he knocks him into the middle of next week. You all get back inside, too. Where's Stacy? You saw what those Wallaces did to the berries? Just because of some loose mouth talk? You heard what they did to Mr. Sam Tatum? Now, what do you think would happen if your Uncle Hammer really hurt one of them? <laughs> they wouldn't stop with your Uncle Hammer either. I'm not trying to argue with you, Hammer Logan. You can't argue with a man when his temper is high as yours. I'm just saying, give yourself a chance to think. I'm thinking. Thinking about them Peckerwoods burning the berries. About them tarring and feathering Sam Tatum. Not just Caleb Wallace whipping Cassie. They got a lot to answer for. Answer to who? Every one of us. And your hand's gonna be the one to make them. I don't see nobody else's hand. Well, folks are. Oh, fine. How? By living what we believe in. I mean, beating up on someone never settled anything. We've been lynched. We've been burned. We've been whooped. And it ain't broke us yet. No, and it never will. Time comes when there's nothing to do but fight. I just don't think this is one of them. Do you really believe that you're gonna change Caleb Wallace's ways by messing up his face? Uh -uh. More likely, him and his kin will come rampaging around your brother's farm. And I get hit. I hit back. I hit back once. 
when I was working alongside your brother at the railroad. I lost my job. Now, I weighs one thing again the other. You still awake, Kathy? Thinking. And you got a lot to think about. It's too bad that Caleb Wallace and Lily and Jean were the cause of it. But, Mom, I didn't do nothing to that confounded Lily and Jean. And Papa would have been just as mad as Uncle Hammer over Mr. Wallace pushing me. How come he went and pushed me like he did? Because he thinks his Lily and Jean is better than you. That old scrawny snaggle two chicken leg. Cassie. Just because she's his daughter. No, baby. Because she's white. White ain't nothing. White is something. Like black is something. Everybody on earth is something. And nobody's better than anybody else. Then how come Mr. Wallace don't know that? He's the kind that has to believe that white people are better than black. It's the one way he can make himself feel big. He hasn't got much else. Why do we let them? Right now, we don't have a choice. But we do have a choice about what we make of our lives. I pray to God you'll make the best of yours. Mama, what if Mr. Morrison can't stop Uncle Hammer? I think you've done enough growing up for one day, Cassie. Your Uncle Hammer will be all right. Everyone was in the kitchen when I woke up. When I saw the smile on Mama's face, I knew everything was fine. Well, I'm still gonna teach that Lily and Jean a lesson. How? I'll figure out something. Hurry, Cassie. Dress yourself. Uncle Hammond's gonna take us to church. In his car? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Hey, Stace. You plan on wearing that to church? Mm-hmm. You wear right now. Off good. There you go. It's supposed to be for Christmas. This cold, and I thought you needed it now. Lord, it's warm. <sighs> Try it on, Stacy. Hang's a bit loose, but I can take that in. I'll be fine. <laughs> you wear it now, Stacy. And be proud of what your Uncle Hammer gave you. It's mighty handsome. <laughs> Come on, you all better go. Let's hurry. I just want to tell you, Stacy, before anyone gets to making jokes at y'all, that coat, 
Make him look like some old preacher. It's the finest coat you ever laid your eyes on. Maybe so. But it needs a little breaking in till it's your size. Understand? Somebody like me, I could wear it. And nobody laugh. Fit just right. Stacy, why do you listen to TJ? He's all mouth and no brains behind it. At least I ain't all sass like you. Me and Stacy's friends. That's why he listened to me. Ain't that right, Stacy, old boy? Yeah. But it's still a good coat all the same. I ain't saying it's not a good coat. Just ain't too cute, boy. Stacy, come on. The service will be starting. Good morning, TJ. Morning, Miss Logan. Granger. Ain't no way I could have passed up that opportunity, Mary. Besides, they got a lot coming for him and Lily and Jean down in the castle. I'm figuring on that, Uncle Hammer. Until spring now. Till the railroad starts laying the tracks again. Hey, Merry Christmas, David. You too, MT. Hey. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Mama, I can smell your cooking a half a mile down the road. And oh my, what it did to my appetite. <laughs> All I got to say about this meal is. Mm. 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 Uh. <laughs> You're going to have to pick up all those papers, because I cannot move from here. <laughs> Negro mother, by Lank's News. Poems? You never heard of him. Well, he's one of our greatest Negro writers, Stacy. Respected by black people and white people alike. Thanks, Papa. You're welcome, son. Stacy. You forgot to show your papa what your Uncle Hammer gave you. Maybe I'll have some time tomorrow to take it in so you can wear it on Sunday. Coat's all right the way it is, Mama. Well, bring it out and let papa see it anyway. I ain't got it. I gave it to TJ. Gave it? To TJ? It was too big for me, and TJ said it made me look like some old preacher. And he'd take it off my hands for me. So I got big enough for it. I didn't give it to him for good. I just lent it to him till I got big enough for it. In this house, we do not give away what loved ones give us. Now you go get that coat. Mary. Leave it where it is. Leave it? He's right, Mary. If Stacy's not smart enough to hold on to a good coat, 
he don't deserve it. But T.J. tricked him out of it. And he says he got a brain. Can't he see through a trick, whether it's T.J.'s or somebody else's? Now, Stacy, if T.J. told you it was summer out there, would you run down the road butt naked? No, sir. You look at me when I'm talking to you, boy. Now, if you're not smart enough to know when somebody's trying to make a fool out of you, you're not going to ever get anywhere in this world. It's rough out there, boy. And as long as there's people, there's always going to be somebody trying to get what you got. Yes, sir. Ain't that the truth? Stacy, why didn't you tell him? Why didn't you tell him you felt sorry for TJ? Because that wasn't the reason. It was. Hard anyways. But you hush. Papa took over organizing the boycott against the Wallaces, talking to friends that Mama hadn't been able to persuade. Papa's a powerful speaker when he wants to be, and folks listen to him. Then Mr. Jameson came. Martin. Jameson, if I could sign the land over to you, too. Why? Well, son, I'm getting on, and I didn't want somebody to take the land away from us. Now they can't. Not unless the two of you let them. That ain't hardly likely, Ma. <laughs> uh, can we look these over, Mr. Jameson? Of course you could. Oh, thank you. There's talk around about you you're organizing a boycott against the losses. Buying over Vicksburg. What about it? You'll need credit. Reckon we know that. As far as I can see, the only thing you have to back that credit is this land. If it comes to that, I'd hate to see you do that. You could lose it. What are you getting at, Mr. Jameson? Papa won't let us lose the land. Hush. I have a little money saved. I'll back you. I don't approve of all the things that go on around here. And there's a lot of other white people who feel the same. Never heard no white man talk like that before. Why would you do a thing like that? Well, not all of us Southerners think like the Wallaces. You know, if you sign that credit, Mr. Jameson, you won't be the most popular man down here. Yes. My wife and I have discussed it fully. Will you realize what could happen? But I'm wondering if you do. What do you mean? Your owning your own land is irritating enough to the Wallaces as it is. You boycott them, they're going to get back at you, one way or another. You mean like they did to the Berries? We know the risks. And then there's Harlan Granger. The Wallaces rent from him. He gets a percentage of what they make in their store. You boycott them, you're taking money away from him. Like I said, Mr. Jameson, we're willing to take that risk. Granger may not agree with the methods of the Wallaces, but he'll support them. Believe me. We're going ahead with it. You know, David, You'll lose. Maybe so. But we'll lose more if we don't try. And I want my children to know we tried. Hey, 
Stacy. Jeremy. What are you doing here? I tried to get here on Christmas, but I couldn't. This is the first chance I've had. Is it all right if I come in? I guess so. Evening, y'all. I brought these over. They're supposed to be presents. They're pecans. That's mighty thoughtful of you, Jeremy. We appreciate it. I'm sorry what my sister did, Cassie. I made this for you. It ain't much. Looks like a Wallace. He is. What the hell is it? Go ahead and try it. It glows real nice. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy, can I offer you something? Some cookies? No, thanks. I just came to bring these over. You Caleb Wallace's boy, aren't you? Yes, sir. I reckon you didn't tell him you were coming here. No, sir. He'd like to say no, wouldn't he? Now, we're grateful you came and you brought us these things. But it don't do to go making trouble for yourself, acting against your daddy's wants. No, sir. I'd better go. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas, 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 Jeremy. Jeremy. That Jeremy, he reminds me of TJ. How so? He doesn't take after any of his kin. I reckon they don't like him much. He sure ain't no cracker like his daddy. David, are you sure you got all the lists? Right here in my pocket. There's seven families we're buying for. You realize that, Mary? What'll make you feel right proud? Seven of them tired of being good niggas. Get up there, mule. Come on. Let's go. Did they take the shotgun? I saw Mr. Morrison stowed under the seat. Oh. What are you fixing your mind on, Cassie? School's starting up again next week. Well? Well, I'm figuring on how to get even with that Lily and Jean. Doesn't do to hold a grudge that long, Cassie. I just got to, Mama. Mama, what Papa mean about they's tired of being good niggas? Well, a good nigger knows his place. Doesn't make trouble. He does what he's told to. And after a while, they don't see him. They don't hear him. They don't even know he's there. Hey, Stacy. Yeah. How come yours is mama teaches what ain't in them books they give us? And you know what's in them. You never study. I look at them. Look at them. And what she says about, about the slave trade and them chains and whippings, them things ain't there. They're in the books Mama reads, and they happen. Miss Lillian Jean, can I talk to you a minute? What do you want? I've been thinking about what happened in Strawberry last month, and I've finally seen how things work. I'm real sorry for what happened, because I'm who I am, and you're who you are. Well, it's taking you long enough to learn the way things are. But I seen it. Here, let me carry them books for you. The way I see it is, we all got to do what we got to do. And I will from now on. Can I see you at the school and carry your books home for you? I mean, I like to make up for what I've done. God will bless you for it. Yes. You think so? What for she be nice to that Lily and Jane? Never you mind. That thing's between Cassie and her. Somebody ought to tell Papa. I think she'll be telling. I had to tell Hammer, David. I knew you'd agree. I didn't want to take the time to come here and tell you, then go back there to telephone. You did the right thing, Mary. How'd he take it? So quiet, he frightened me. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. 
David. Fifteen years of pain, thrown away. Cheated away. Never felt this bad before, Mary. Never. by before mama we get by now it ain't that son i was just remembering my babies <laughs> we had six of them you know cassie lost our girls when they was babies <laughs> i guess that's why i love your sweet mama so much oh but them boys they grew strong and all of them love this land. I remember. Oh, and then Mitchell, he got killed in the war. Kevin, he got drowned. Now there's just you, David, and Hammond. Oh, Lord, please calm the fire in him before it burns him up. Please. Please. scared to move, unless he's got others with him, carrying guns. Ain't gonna last that way. Now, Hammond, you mind your temper. Seems to me like people have been minding ass too long down there. Well, at least it's quiet. Yeah, like before a storm. And don't you bring that storm down on us, Hammer Logan. It's coming, Ma, whether I'm here or not. Now, you mind your temper. Ma, I've listened to you all my life. And you know I love you. 
But I can't take the stuff you can. First thing we gotta do is take care of Harlem Granger. How? How? Right and proper way, Ma. You reckon they'll be at the bank? As far as I know, he comes in every day. Good. And you can make it to Strawberry with me anywhere? I sure can. Now, you make him use his sense, David. I'll do my best, Mama. Papa, can I go with you? Might be a good thing if you did. Thanks. Mr. Higgins, I'd like to speak to you. Just a minute, David. Going fishing, Harlem Green. Good. David, you know I can't give you any extension. The bank just won't let me. We're not asking for no extension. We come to pay off the mortgage. All right. What's going on out here? If you come here to cause trouble, David, uh... No trouble. Mr. Higgins here to tell you. It's their mortgage money. The entire balance? Check it for yourself. Wouldn't want to cheat the bank. And then if you'd be so kind as to sign that mortgage paper and give it to us, please, sir. Where'd you get that money? Not from around here, that's for sure. We come by it on this. It's all here, Mr. Granger. All we need now is your signature. Sign the paper. I'm real pleased for you. Melvin, they, they, they hurt me bad. Help, help me get, get home. Don't, don't, don't wake nobody. But what happened? I don't want to tell you. Don't tell her you ain't going nowhere. into Barnett's Mercantile. R.W. Melvin, they, they told me they was gonna get me that pearl-handled gun. <laughs> I promise you'll help me, Stacy. We still friends. How'd you get hurt? R.W., he went for the cash box. He, he, he made so much noise that Mr. and Mrs. Barnett come down and saw us. I, 
R.W. Melvin, they was wearing stocking masks. They looked like they was colored. <laughs> Mr. Barnett tried to get the cash box away from R.W. <laughs> Don't make me tell it, please. Tell it, tell it. <laughs> and Melvin, he, he, he picked up an ax and hit Mr. Barnett alongside the head. I don't know. I I got scared and I ran. Miss Miss Barnett was yelling, "Nigga murderers!" She she saw me, Stacy. She saw me clear. I I tried to get in the in the truck, but R. W. Melvin dragged me out, and beat me up, and he and he left me there. Wait, Big Mom, she'll die. No, no, just just help me home. My my mom take care of me, all right. Just just help me home. And make it by myself, please. here to do. Bobby, get on in there with that rope. And the rest of you, get up. Get up. Come on, let's go get him. Let's get him. Bring that rope up here. Come on, get out of the car. Let's get in there. I got some rope. Stacy, that's our W. Melvin. They were with TJ. Mama, Mama. Inside the whole court here tonight. Now, don't you come messing in this thing, Jameson. You do, and we're just as likely to take care of a nigger lover, too. Mr. Granger, he said he wasn't gonna stand for any hanging on his place. He told me that if you touch that boy while you're on his land, he's gonna hold you all responsible. Well, we can just go someplace else, right down to the Logan place. And we can take care of that big nigger at the same time. Cassie, take little man and Christopher John back to the house and tell them what happened. Pop won't know what to do. But what about you, Stacy? I'm staying here. I'll do what I can. Hurry now. David, you can't stop them with guns. This thing's been coming a long time, Mary. There ain't no other way. Stacy's out there. You want them to find him? I want them to hang him, too. But they'll kill you. Let the die fight him. Kicking at the end of a rope. If we don't stop them there, they'll come here and we'll all burn. They've got guns too, and there's more of them. Fight fire with fire. You ready? David! David! Please don't. It might be a show to start a fire somewhere, Mary.
Now, I don't care what you say, Jameson. I don't care about the sheriff either. I'm going to take this boy out, and I'm going to hang him right up by his head. Do you hear me? Mr. Wiley, you know I'm not going to stand by for any lynching. This boy is going to get his chance in a regular court of law. And we ain't letting no nigger lover take hold of our law. You'll have your law in court. Take it easy, boys. Take it easy. <laughs> Lightning's hit something. There's a fire in the fields getting into my trees. Leave the boy and get after it. Caleb, you come with me. Rest of you go over to the other side and kill a fire break. Mama, the cotton's on fire. Lightning must have done it. There's Mr. Granger's trees. Lord have mercy, he'd be mighty put out if they burn. Come on. We best help him and try to stop it. Mama, can we go? No, you all stay at the house, you hear? from where I was sleeping in my treehouse. Papa wasn't home, so I came over here to see if I could help. I found him fighting the fire with Melvin, R.W., and a lot of other men. I don't know where they all come from. You, your Papa and Mr. Granger got some men digging a ditch for a fire break. You seen Papa? He all right? And Stacy too? Yeah, they's all right, and your Mama and Grandma. says he has a couple of broken ribs. Jaw's broken, but he'll be all right for now. Mr. Barnett, dead. I'm going to tell T.J.'s folks to take him into town. I'll come with you. David, you stay clear of this. Don't give anybody any cause to think about you at all. Except that you got what was coming to you by losing a quarter of your cotton. Well, they might just wonder how lightning happened to strike your cut time to stop a lynching. Things are quiet now. Let them stay there. Morrison, I hate to say this to you, but I think you'd be wise to leave Caleb, Dewberry, and Thurston. 
They can nurse a grudge for a long time. I know things are going to be rough before I come here, Mr. Jameson. I'm not going to tuck tail and run and hide now. Y'all, come on, get in the car. I'll take you back home. TJ now. You'll stay in jail till the trial. Then what? I ain't never lied to y'all. I wish I could lie to y'all now. Mr. Barnett's dead. But it was Melvin and R.W. who killed him. TJ, he'll say that. You say it to a white jury. And Melvin and R.W. say he's lying, and that's the way it is. I'll get there someday. I don't even like TJ. Why do I feel so sorry for him? Papa, does it have to be? You feeling bad for what shouldn't be. Now go on, children. You need your sleep. I learned what growing up meant when I was 11. It meant seeing the way things really were, the hurts some of us had to live with and could never put out of mind. It meant being a fret when the lights of cars came towards you at night, knowing the men who drove them and what they could do. And it meant suffering the meannesses that folks said we had to expect. And sometimes it meant fighting back and letting loose everything that was busting to come out of you and tasting how sweet it was to be on top for once. I was still a little girl living on our own land and all of us striving together to make better what we had. See that mountain looks too big to climb How am I gonna make it other side well there's nothing can be done if you've got a mind I can climb that mountain taking it one step at a time